Thank you very much. I'm going to move on to our other panelists now. Um, and I'm going to start with Francesca. I'll put you on the spot, Francesca, now. Um, I mean, monitoring and evaluation has been increasingly recognized as a, as a vital part of humanitarian work. But some have argued that it's really difficult to demonstrate the impact of protection work, you know, that, that is, you know, to quantify the absence of a violation. And so reflecting on humanitarian agencies overall, do you think they've been able to evaluate their protection work adequately? And has there been any recent research on the subject? Yes, um, thank you, Wendy. Um, it is really difficult and challenging, as you can imagine, to follow from uh, the presentation uh, from uh, um, from Nora, uh, who brought really some very lively, um, uh, uh, lively point to our attention and for this afternoon discussion. So perhaps uh, uh, a good segue into the point I want to make is uh, if I start from the third C she mentioned out of the three Cs of her uh, presentation, that is the third one is about competencies. So when we are talking about the importance of m and &E and the increasingly strong rhetoric that we have been hearing around the importance of monitoring and evaluation and moving to, e to ever more ambitious evaluation, uh, looking for instance at outcomes and impacts, this is something that has been challenging not only the humanitarian protection community and uh, protection operational agencies, but more broadly um, humanitarian actors uh, um, uh, across, uh, across the board, from donor to the UN, the Red Cross movement and, uh, and NGO. So definitely the challenges that uh, uh, the, the, pr the evaluation of protection communities facing are uh, um, uh, re resonate with the challenges that are faced more broadly by, by the, humanitarian, uh, the humanitarian evaluation community. However, what has been really troubling, I find, sitting in ALNAP and observing some of those trends, is that the evaluation of protection has so far, and I'm hoping this is uh, now going to start changing, has been so far much more peripheral to the attention of evaluators and researchers. So there has not been, I think, sufficient focus in customizing the evaluation guidance that is put at disposal of uh, evaluation and researcher that are working with uh, operational um, humanitarian agency to try to get better at building a stronger evidence base that is used when we are argumenting uh, what are the results we are achieving at the level of outcome and impact, what is the uh, evidential quality that we can produce in our evaluation work. So um, I think part of the reason why there has been so far more peripheral attention allocated to uh, monitoring and evaluation of protection. I'm going to mention just three points and we can go back during the, um, the, the question and answer, if, if, if you will. One is that I think there is a, a, a limited pool of available uh, researcher and evaluators that are uh, contracted to work and collaborate with operational agency uh, to try to combine the best of both worlds, in a way. Uh, uh, evaluators that would combine in their in their profile, an adequate knowledge of the operational set uh, context uh, where uh, protection programming operates, uh, uh, including conflict settings, obviously, but also enough experience and knowledge of humanitarian uh, evaluation uh, approaches and methods, uh, and uh, enough experience to be able to, to tell and distinguish what is feasible in certain contexts where a uh, vulnerability of population needs to be, uh, needs to be a forefront concern when it comes, for instance, to data collection um, that, is, uh, that is quite key uh, in, uh, in evaluative work. That is, I think, one of the first reason I wanted to mention. The second reason is that uh, when we go back and look at what has been done so far in terms of evaluating protection, um, there has been not enough evaluative work that has been produced and put in public domain, so disclosed, that has protection as the main focus, the main topic uh, uh, for evaluation. Very often protection is, uh, is a bit of a side topic, is a bit in the evaluation terms of reference, coming, up, coming a bit low in the, in the prioritization list. And so um, it tends to be a bit watered down, even when it comes to methodology, for instance, and data collection. 
and so on and so forth. The last point uh, I would like to mention is that I think so far there has been quite limited experience in terms of uh, funding and coordinating evaluation activity, evaluation and learning activity among uh, um, protection agencies, uh, uh, operational humanitarian agency and uh, evaluation and researcher. So some more coordination and perhaps exploring further the possibility of collaborating and teaming up uh, with the academia and, uh, and with research specialists and evaluation specialists would definitely contribute to put evaluation of protection concern more at the forefront um, of, the, of, of this uh, agenda for learning and improvement uh, that is supported by stronger evaluation work. <laughs>